Hola, buenos días y gracias para las preguntas. Mi español es muy mal, pero me gusta mucho España. Entonces, vale. I didn't even know what a politician was when I was a little girl. Actually, I wanted to be a nanny or a cook. And I think that comes from the stereotypes that 40 years ago, because I'm 42, that was what women were expected to do. I didn't think I was ever interested in politics, but actually politics affects just about everything in everybody's life. And I'm really, really interested in my community and community development. So actually I was interested in politics, but not in a way that I actually knew. I have been a Member of Parliament for Copeland for exactly two years and five days. I was elected as the Member of Parliament for Copeland on the 24th of February 2017. I'm just starting to find my way around, I still get lost a little bit. It's an incredible place and it's wonderful to work with so many friendly, enthusiastic and nurturing colleagues and I don't think that comes across in the media just how enthusiastic and nurturing this environment is. Nobody has ever looked down on me for being a woman. I don't think they'd dare, actually. And I do think it's important, as a mum of four daughters, Gabrielle, Savannah, Francesca and Rosemary, who are aged between 16 and 20, that um, I show them that anything is possible, that you can set yourself to achieve whatever you want in life, and gender and geography should never, ever be a barrier. So I put myself forward for this job because I'm a bit of a moaning, twining kind of person and I would see jobs that need to be done, I would think our roads aren't good enough, our train service isn't good enough, we didn't have a train service on a Sunday, I was worried about um, big industry challenges and I just felt that somebody needs to do their job properly and make it happen, get the investment into Cumbria that it deserves. But I also believe that you shouldn't put the key to your future in somebody else's pocket. So when our local MP resigned, I decided that, to be true to myself, I should at least have a go. I didn't expect to be selected by the Conservative Party, and I certainly didn't expect to be elected. But I was. I would not be in this incredible job now without firstly the support of my husband, and my daughters, and also my mum and dad and my brother. That's the most important support, I think, that close family network. And my friends, and then absolutely people came from all corners of the UK to come and help me in my campaign. We'd never had a Conservative MP in Copeland before, and we'd never had a woman MP before. But people came from all over to help deliver leaflets, they walked the streets and lanes, knocking on doors, trying to convince people that it was time for change and the rest is history. So it was about Christmas time and as I said the, the MP Jamie Reid had resigned and I was busy thinking oh, who's going to put themselves forward to do this job, it's really important. I never really thought that I could do that and um, in some ways I'm slightly ashamed to say that I went into my local pub on Boxing Night the day after Christmas, 26th of um, December 2016 and one of my good friends Ron stood at the bar and he said Trudy you're gonna do it aren't you? you're gonna put yourself forward and he wanted to um, suggest he did suggest that I should put myself forward as an independent member of Parliament because he didn't have much confidence in the political parties at the time so I thought this was a bit of a laugh Am I capable of being a Member of Parliament? Anyway, after a couple of glasses of Prosecco, I decided maybe I was, maybe I had the right skill set and I should certainly have a go. But I went home and looked at what Theresa May had said about wanting a country that works for everyone and that was really inspirational for me. And that was essentially why I decided I wanted to join her team. So after making that decision, I contacted some local people, members of the party, and it was quite clear that they already had somebody in mind, so that didn't really get anywhere, but not one to be defeated. I then got in touch with the London Central Office, and I remember Chloe picked up the phone. I've never met Chloe, but she probably doesn't realise how important she was back then, because she picked up the phone and was really friendly, and I said, 
I'm quite interested in putting myself forward as a candidate for the MP for Copeland, but I'm not really sure how to do it. And Chloe explained the process to me. She sent me the form by email. I filled it in. I filled the second form in. I filled the third form, which I remember was 11 pages long. And it was all about my dreams for my community, what I hoped to achieve, what I'd been working on previously, my aspirations. And then I had a five hour interview in London, the mother of all interviews. First thing is the thing that I still want to improve and that's ensuring that we have a strong nuclear future in my area because Sellafield and the businesses that surround Sellafield, the great big nuclear power plant, are the most important way that we can secure our financial, economic, social and environmental future. I most of the time love working as an MP because it's just so interesting. We get to see a whole variety of different ways in which the country is run. We also get to meet inspirational people on a daily basis and hear about them. And that is, you know, it's just a fantastic experience. There are only 650 of us, so it's a huge privilege to be able to do the job. And most importantly, it does give us control and influence over our lives and the lives of our community. An MP is very much about community development, but actually an MP can be whoever they want to be. I choose to run my office more about community development, so I'm not particularly enthusiastic about becoming the next Prime Minister, but I am very enthusiastic about working with a really positive team that wants to affect change in Cumbria. So that's how I orientate myself to be able to form teams, whether it's nuclear, whether it's hospitals and health, education, improving the road network and the rail network, or making sure we've got broadband. And that's pretty much how I operate. And then I use the control and influence that I can have in my community to come down here into London and tell ministers what's needed. It's not quite as simple as that, and I'm not going to lie and say it's easy, but that's how I'm working it with my fantastic team. I've had jobs where I've actually worked harder. Um, when I owned and ran my own children's day nursery, that was far more physically demanding and actually a lot more responsibility because I had to make sure that the children were safe and happy and healthy and ensure that I was open every day, that my staff were looked after. And also when I was a home carer going out in the night, in the winter, in all weathers, to make sure older people could get to bed or to help them get out of bed in the morning. That actually was more physically tough. This job is difficult because you just wish you had a magic wand. You want to be able to solve everybody's problems and you can't. And also the knowledge that you need to have over everything is quite demanding as well. But that's part of why I love it. No more dancing on tables, not in public anyway. And I haven't done a good old karaoke for quite a while. Essentially, I have to behave myself because of the scrutiny that MPs have, but other than that, I've not changed. I have always had a great work-life balance because I've always loved my job. If I won the lottery tonight, I'd still be in work tomorrow. And I've pretty much said that about every job. This is my 12th career. And when I've started to not enjoy the job and I can't see a way of it improving, I've left that job. So um, my work-life balance, I don't think there's such a thing, you know, I don't really move from work to home and not think about work. And I don't not think about home when I'm at work. So it's a blend really. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, I haven't got a bucket list as such. If I had six months to live, I would still carry on with the job I've got. Um, and I'd probably be even more focused. So, I have a manifesto essentially, which is what people voted on when they made me a Member of Parliament, and that's to ensure that Copeland is a sustainable community moving forward, that we have a high quality of life, that we don't detract from our outstanding natural beauty, that we have good quality jobs, and that people feel happy, healthy, and confident living in Copeland. Gosh, sometimes I wonder what are those reasons. I did vote to leave on the um, 23rd of June 2016. I wasn't an MP then. 
I voted to leave because I'm very, very proud of my country and I want to achieve even more. And when I look back into the history of our country, the great um, silver engineers, the Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and you know the achievements that Britain made, I just feel I want to get a little bit of that back. I want Britain to be great again, I suppose. But I also absolutely recognised, I mean, I've lived in Spain, I love the country. And I think one of the great things about Britain and being in Europe as a continent is that within a couple of hours, we can experience different climates, different cultures, different languages, different countries, different people. And I hope that continues. And I certainly want to ensure that we maintain brilliant relationships with all our European neighbours. But ultimately, I want Britain and the United Kingdom to be in control of its own destiny. Um, no differently really than I would face any other person with different ideas to me. I would be respectful and am. You don't see me shouting and bawling in the chamber. Um, I would try and understand things from their perspective, but ultimately I think all politicians want the same thing. We all want to get a successful country. We've got different ways of thinking how that could be achieved because of our individualities, you know, how we were brought up, our culture, our religion. We're all going to come at this from a different perspective, but I do believe we all really want the same thing. So I don't have any enemies in politics. I have many, many friends. Oh, Theresa May is lovely. She really does remind me of my mum in many ways because I think she's an introvert. She's not really a chatterbox. She's not one for small talk or chit chat. Um, but she's been very, very helpful to me. She's been up to um, Bootle, where I live, and Millen, one of the towns near me. So she's visited Cumbria twice. And she works incredibly hard. Her stamina is amazing. And she does have the national interest at heart. So I have a huge amount of respect for Theresa May. I can't ever imagine me and the Prime Minister becoming drinking buddies soon because we've definitely got different styles there but huge respect to her absolutely for what she's doing. Oh gosh, do you know I can't think of a worse job right now so I guess the answer to that is a most definite no. However, I would probably look forward to becoming a minister in the future once I've achieved all the things I want to achieve um, in my community first. But at the moment, there's so much to do in Copeland. When I finish my work in Parliament, I think I'll probably continue to do the same thing I've always wanted to do, which is work with a group of like-minded, enthusiastic people that want to affect positive change. I've been saying that for about 10 years, and whether it's in a voluntary role as a parish councillor or a school governor, or a paid role as a regeneration officer working for the council, um, or as a member of parliament. It's always about feeling at the end of the day that we've made some progress. I think I might have wanted to have been an engineer. And the reason I didn't consider engineering when I was 16 is because it just wasn't a thing that girls particularly in my area were encouraged to do. But now that I'm um, a private parliamentary secretary to the Ministry of Defence and also the Department of Transport, the things that really um, interest me are engineering. It's things that move, it's how they move. And I now know that I would have been really interested in that as a career. I probably left that a little bit too late. However, what is wonderful, as a mum, I can encourage and do encourage my daughters to take up those roles. So Gabrielle is pursuing her career as a lawyer, which she's really enjoying her university course. Savannah's an electrical designer, so me and Savannah talk quite a lot about engineering there, about electrical design. Francesca's progressing her career as a nurse, and that's really, really interesting. Apart from, she goes along in life hoping there'll be a medical emergency where she can get a first aid kit out for. And Rosie, I do think she might go into engineering because she's really interested in cars and all things that move. So that's a great thing about being a mum. I would be highly unlikely to become a president because that would mean I'd have to move country 
we don't have a presidential system in this country. Um, but if I did become Prime Minister, one thing I would probably improve is the ability for local communities, towns and villages, to be more in control of their own destiny. So I would probably devolve more powers to can-do people in communities. And I think that's um, something that I could see as an improvement in Spain, giving local people and local communities more powers, because they're the people that know what their community needs. In my opinion, is a good thing. And can I just finish with, and I would encourage anyone who's interested in community development or just interested in their communities to get involved in whichever way they can because it's so rewarding. Muchas gracias para las preguntas, uh, Rebecca, Belia, Miguel, Angel, Natalia, Amy, Ariadna, Eva, Sergio, Mariola, Gustavo, Irene, Avie, Chaya, Stepan, Leslie, Islam, Petro, Claudia, Laura, Maribel, Diego, Sergio, Anna, Alejandro, Rosanna, Damian, Daniel, Ismail, Daniel Para, Sara, Elena, Jose Carlos, Paco, Sergio, and E. Avier. Muchas gracias.